Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll take a look at how you can use Redis as a caching layer in Python. So Redis is an in-memory database. Um, you can store data in it. It's pretty much a key value store. I'm going to link some resources down in the description to know more about Redis. But the main goal of this video is to show you how you can use the Redis client in Python to put data in Redis and read it back from it. We're going to be red running Redis locally in our computer. However, in like a production setting, you have your Redis server running on a different machine. And you can just like connect to it from your server and then get the data directly from memory. It's very, very quick to get data from memory. So you don't have to, like, if you compare it to other disk based databases like MySQL or any other database, this should be way, way quicker because you store your data in memory, which is like the RAM of the machine where your Redis server is running. So the first thing you want to do is import Redis, which is the Python client. And then you want to in instantiate uh, the object, which is going to be Redis. Redis. And by default, it should uh, try to connect to the Redis server running on your local machine. But you can explicitly give it the host. In our case, it's going to be a local host. And you can give it a port. Uh, by default, uh, Redis runs on port 6379. But once again, both, both host and port are very configurable. So wherever your Redis uh, cluster is hosted, you can just mention those over here. So once we have that, let's just try to put something into Redis. So as I said, Redis is a key value pair. So you literally give it a key and then some uh, value associated with that key. Later, later on, if you want to retrieve that value, you just tell Redis, you give Redis the key and ask for the value. So let's just do a redis.set, give it a key. Let's say we give it France as the key. And then the value, let's say Paris is the value. Uh, and then let's do it again. So let's just do Germany and the capitals Berlin. There you go. So now we, we should have two pieces of data in Redis. One is the key France, which is the value Paris. And the other is the key Germany with the value Berlin. If we try to get it, you just have to do r.get and then give it the key, so France, and let's also try Germany. Uh, and then let's just store them in a variable. So let's do France capital equals this, and then Germany capital equals this. And then let's just print out both. Right, so there we go. And see what we're getting over here. So we're just going to go here and then run it. And yeah, as you can see, we're getting Paris, which is France's capital, and Berlin, which is Germany's capital. So you see, like, uh, this is a byte object, uh, this is a byte data type, even though you put that as a string. That's because uh, usually your Redis server, your Redis cluster is hosted on a different machine. And when you're getting the data through the network, you retrieve it as bytes, and then you can, like, cast it to a string number or whatever your data type is. Uh, so a couple more, uh, a couple other methods that you might find helpful is, let's do one of them is you can set multiple pieces of data with one function call. So you see how we did dot set dot set twice. Instead of that, you can just do it once. And the way you do it is, we'll just get rid of it. Just do a r dot set. Uh, I think it's called m set and then pass it a dictionary with the key value pairs, right? So we can do, once again, Germany is Berlin. And then the next key value pair would be, uh, let's just do the same one again. So we can do France, we can spell it, and that's going to be Paris, right? Now you're setting both the keys, uh, key value pair with one function call. And then let's just print the two out, right? Let's just do r.get Germany. And let's just do the same thing here for France. Let's see what's happening. We're going to run it again. And yeah, we're getting it again. So this is just a concise way to set multiple keys at the same time if you want to do that. 
one last function one last function we can take a look at is uh, you can check to see if something is here in redis or not that's because redis is usually used as a caching layer so you get the data from a from an external api call and then you stick it in the cache the next time a request comes in you check if the data is here in redis or not if it is then you just get it from there if not you make the api call so to do that uh, a very common use case is you need to check if a particular key exists or not so let's try that out so we can just do let's just do it's called r.exists give it a key so let's say germany and then um, actually uh, let's print out the value related to germany and if it is not there then let's just print out cannot find the capital getting from api right let's run it so yeah you're getting berlin but what if we change it to something different like let's just do uh, serbia right and then uh, let's just do here you have serbia again and then you have this one so let's so now it's going to try to see if there is a key called serbia that exists in redis if it does it's going to get the value if not it's going to just uh, print this one out see as you can see we're hitting this line 10 because the key is not there so uh you don't get it so you can like now get it from the api and then uh, let's say you can like make the API call, get some value, and then you can set that over here. And then the next time around, uh, when you do it, uh, when you like call it, you can get it from the cache. And yeah, that is pretty much all. Let me see if there is any other function that you might find helpful. Mm, so there is another one, which is gonna be, uh, let's try it out here actually. Might be a good exercise. So we can do something called p set x. So what this takes is the key at first. Let's just do Germany again. And then you see it takes time millisecond. Uh, that is how long should this key value pair exist in Redis. As I said, Redis is used as a caching layer. And the very common use of a caching layer is you want certain data to stick around for a given amount of time and then you want it to be to get deleted automatically uh, so you can give it like 1000 so that's like one second and then you give it the value uh, and then if we do let's just get it here right or that, let's just print it out we're gonna get the value for germany we just in this line we just have it put it in the cache so odds like you would expect this to be there because this is we're not doing anything complex so you should be able to get the data within one second but then if we're doing a time to sleep or something so let's just import time and then let's just sleep uh, and that is seconds right so let's sleep for two seconds and then let's try to get it again or not get Germany so what's happening here we're setting the Germany key to value Berlin and telling Redis to put it in the cache for one second which is 1000 millisecond we're getting it immediately so we should get a value then we're sleeping for two seconds and then we're trying to get it again but given two seconds has passed and our TTL was one second we should expect nothing to be printed from here so let's try to run it berlin we're waiting for two seconds and then none so you see we're using the same function to get the value associated with germany but given two seconds has passed and the ttl was one second we don't get it anymore we just get none so yeah that's pretty much all from me today guys hopefully this is going to help you connect your python code to a redis server whether it's running locally or in a remote server somewhere and if you have any questions you can put it in the comments below if you if the video helped you in, a, in any way please leave a like and subscribe i'll talk to you in the next one bye, -bye.